determines a fall should examine a lot. Would you be able to help the state with its problem with the salmon population? Absolutely, we could help them because of it goes back to the clean water. Could outsourcing to a private facility? A 150,000 summer steelhead fingerlings were killed at the Rock Creek Hatchery back in May. That's according to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Dangerously high water temperatures and bacteria and parasite infections are what caused the fish to die. Rock Creek Hatchery draws water from the North Umpqua, which is where the pathogens come from. Be a helpful and possible solution. Our water's artesian, it's in a fault line. It only comes out of the ground on this property. It's 59 degrees, never changes temperature. It's drinking quality coming out of the ground. Because of the current plan. Commercial and recreational fishing is prohibited after a vote last night by the Pacific Fishery Management Council. Isn't working. Closures will last through next spring. A state fish and wildlife truck driver lost control of the truck he was driving on the McKenzie Highway. The vehicle rolled over and spilled 11,000 live smolt salmon across the road. And multiple mistakes. Hundreds of thousands of fish were accidentally killed. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife runs the hatchery and says the mistake came from an employee. End up being catastrophic. Result of that accident, hundreds of thousands of fry here at the Coal Rivers Hatchery near Shady Cove were killed. Ooh, so there's no pumps in the entire facility, correct? We use no electricity to raise fish. If the electricity went off tomorrow forever, it would have no effect whatsoever on our facility. And it turns out the hatchery is also dealing with some operational issues. Generators have been powering the hatchery, which means water heaters can't be used, and that's impacting the fish. ODFW says it's also dealing with a delivery and treatment system failure, which means its mechanical filtration and UV sterilization system is currently ineffective. The fish are in these smaller quarters, and so the pathogens are amplified. Meyer says this loss will definitely leave an impact. It'll just take time to find out how big that impact is. Meet Tom McDonald, owner of Desert Springs Trout Farm. Desert Springs is here to help the state of Oregon in any way it can to raise salmon or to take over the trout from their facilities so they can raise more salmon. But it's just a, uh, it's a real obstacle because they don't want to do anything with Desert Springs. We've had it for 30 years. We've never had an outbreak of disease. We get certified every year. We have to have a veterinarian come in. They take the samples of all the fish and then it's sent up to Waddle in Washington to be tested. We've got all the documentation if anybody wants to see it for the 30 years. We are the only clean water facility in the western United States. All right guys, so here's the whole, there's just a cave right there that the water is just coming out of that. It's coming over here into the pond space and then without any pumps or anything, it's just gravity fed right over into the nursery over there. Some of the water is piped directly so that it will run down and pass the nursery straight into the raceway. All right, guys, so here's the water that's coming straight out of the ground. And this water is such quality that I'm going to actually grab some up. I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to drink some. I mean, look at that water. I mean, that is absolutely crystal clear. 
It's delicious. It really is. After the water flows naturally from either the weir or out of the nursery, it begins to naturally flow down the sloped grade of the property. And at the end of the system, no water is wasted because it flows back into the Anna River, making this the greenest and cleanest hatchery I've ever seen. Super saturate the water and it makes a way healthier fish. The water comes into here. It's got oxygen going out there. And see those little bubbles? Yeah. And it moves through the baffles back and forth. It forces the nitrogen out and you super saturate your water with oxygen. So it removes the nitrogen and adds oxygen. That's and our great. fish are so much healthier and better with oxygen. Look at that fish. Oh my god. <laughs> massive fish. How many are inside this this raceway right here? About 700. 700 fish that size. And Tom, how long did it take you to raise these fish? A little over two years. Man, that's nothing. It's incredible. Well, what do you think? This place is honestly so cool. I am like mind blown. You know, I've been to a, a bunch of ODFW hatcheries in my days. It does not compare to this. I mean, just the sheer amount of giant trout that are all healthy in every single one of these ponds is actually honestly just so mind blowing to me. Today, how many pounds of fish do you raise here at the hatchery in a given year? Uh, we're up to about 700,000 pounds. Tom, what's the furthest that you're able to to deliver your fit? Uh, down by Los Angeles, we've delivered it. Roughly, what is that, 1,200 miles? So it'd be pretty fair to say that you'd be able to stock anywhere in the entire state of Oregon without any problem. We stock uh, Oregon, California, Nevada, Washington, and Idaho. On average, how long does it take Desert Springs Trout Farm to raise a fish that's around, say, five pounds? Five pounds would be between uh, two years. We could raise a three to six pound fish in two years. How many raceways do you have on the facility? 75. 75 raceways. And then I understand that you guys are putting in new weirs currently, and so you plan to put in some new raceways. How many raceways do you guys think you'll be able to put in? We could double what we've got here. So we Probably. could put another 75 to 100 raceways in. We'll have enough water to do it. How many fish do you think that each raceway can hold? They hold about 8,000 pounds. So if ODFW was willing to play ball and ODFW gave you all of the approval process necessary to do so, would you be able to help the state with its problem with the salmon population? Absolutely, we can help because of, it goes back to the clean water. And uh, we've raised coho here before. We don't have the dead loss like ODF and W does with their salmon. As a result of that accident, hundreds of thousands of fry here at the Coal Rivers Hatchery near Shady Cove. And we could do it, and we could do it really well. Oregon State hatcheries typically pull water from a water system that is above the hatchery. Now because this watershed is not controllable and a natural resource, it can have parasites which can infect fish and be complicating in the hatchery operations. Another problem they have is temperature, whether it be cold or switching over into hot temperatures because they're drawing from a watershed that they're not controlling. Dangerously high water temperatures and bacteria and parasite infections are what cause the fish to die. Rock Creek Hatchery draws water from the North Umpqua, which is where the pathogens come from. Because they do not draw from the Anna River, 
but instead draw from their own personal artesian well, there is no ecosystem to be found above the hatchery, but instead nothing but pure groundwater. Simultaneously, the water passes by a fault line and is constantly coming out at a perfect 59 degree temperature. You gotta feel it. It's like warm. That's crazy. Overcoming these two obstacles, plus no electricity or pumps involved, this makes Desert Springs the perfect place to raise healthy fish. Tom even invited us to try some of his fish. All right. So Tom and Megan have been kind enough that they're gonna let me take one of their beautiful trout home to eat. And look at this beauty. Look at this fish, you guys. Look at that fish. Like, I don't even think, like, the camera didn't do it justice up close. That thing is huge. That's, that's a steel. Next to my thigh. You know, that's a big fish. That's a big fish. And the table quality of these trout from big to small was absolutely impressive. Way better than anything I'd ever seen from ODFW. Start raising fish here if we can get all the approvals and get clean eggs. In an Oregon document from February 2023 by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Deputy Director, it is noted that the department first utilized trout from private producers in 2010 in response to a pilot program created by Senate Bill 834 directing the department to spend 10% of its trout budget on private purchases. It also states that ODFW was purchasing trout from Desert Springs during the 2010s. However, ODFW discontinued purchases in 2019 through 21 year in favor of producing fish in-house. They also went on to say that feedback from anglers was an important factor in phasing out purchases from private trout producers. It would seem pretty unbelievable and far-fetched after seeing the facility and personally seeing the type of trout and quality of trout that come from Desert Springs that anglers would have any complications or complaints about this hatchery. So if you agree with me and you think this hatchery should be used, it's time to contact our governor at our state official. You can go over to their website and contact the governor. You just simply go down to the share your opinion button. You can write out your message. Simply scroll down and click submit. You can also contact the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Director's Office with the phone number below. ODFW seems to lose a lot of fish every single year from different mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. I think it's time we start utilizing this beautiful facility for everything that it has to offer. Desert Springs is here to help the state of Oregon in any way it can. They don't want us to do anything with Desert Springs.